Okay, now that I have my sketches and my approach and I've started to collect reference, these are the folders I'm gonna collect reference into. I wanna to start thinking about this project as um, kind of building a vehicle, like on an assembly line. And I have different sections that I'm responsible for. And then all those sections have to get welded and, and fixed together. And then at the end, the whole vehicle gets kind of polished and painted and, and finished, right? And all the details worked out. So what are the different sections? Well, I have a head section. And so I collect reference for heads that I think will be useful, complete with textures and things I think are interesting. So I have the, the beetle stuff there. I have head stuff there. I even have some pine cone nature stuff and spikes. Doesn't mean I'm gonna use all of it, right? It's just stuff I found that I found inspiring. Then I have the back and hat spike reference that runs along the back. And that's where I have a lot of pine cone stuff, some, some uh, nut stuff. This is what a chestnut looks like, which I thought was fascinating before it's opened. Pine cone stuff, thorns, on and on. Then I have the tail reference, which is just this fuzzy pine cone, which I thought was really interesting. I thought, oh, that'd be a nice little natural element. But I don't know if I'll use that or if I'll use rock. Then I have the forearms, right? And I have everything from crabs, which I think I'm gonna use for the hands, combined with this crazy, uh, bird beak, which I'm going to use as claws. I have two images of that. Thank you, Pixabay. To the moles, to the sloth, right? To some reference I found, because you'll just find random images while you're searching that I really liked, which was of this vulture. And just, this is just beautiful and so strong and in focus. It might be interesting to integrate that into maybe the shoulders. And then this is maybe the most important reference. The thing that shows how the collarbone connects with the forearms, right? Just the anatomy of the chest. And then I can build up on that chest, maybe with the vulture feathers or something else. So that's, that's a key one, showing the actual chest anatomy at, at the angle you're going to use. Uh, this one's cool with the bear. You know, it's very strong, but it's not the right angle. It doesn't really describe the form. So that's what I know I'm going to use. And then uh, the hindquarters, so the back end, I actually found this lion cub is pretty nice and nice and sharp. And then also this dog I thought was pretty nice kind of simple and understated. And I'll of course replace the tail and do some new textures. And this dog's okay, but maybe that's a little too dog-like, right? It kind of takes you out of it. And then the bears, that just changes the position too much. But this was like a really, really nicely high resolution image, but it's just not at the right angle, unfortunately but maybe there's parts of it I can use for the back or for the neck. So it's always good to have a lot of reference. Actually thinking this one's probably the strongest in terms of the angle. And I'll just swap it, you know, flip it. And then lastly, I have the obsidian. This is what's great. This is what uh, composite artists use all the time and shoot for themselves. Just reference on a blank background. Makes it really easy to even with the strong cast shadow, it makes it really easy to select and use as a texturing element. But then I also found this, you know, big kind of natural rock of obsidian. This is a good kind of overall texture I can use uh, to kind of finish off my creature. And then I found this. These are beetles. And I thought that'd be a really nice kind of otherworldly fantasy counterpoint to the black obsidian. So maybe I can bring that in texturally as well. So even though these aren't structural, these will be kind of the, the pinstriping, the detailing on top of the, the creature at the end. But I want to worry about the, the structural stuff first. And then a pine cone I found, which is just gorgeous, I wanted to use this for its color and for its reflective qualities for the forearms. And so you'll just get little ideas like that as you're looking for reference. Okay.
So now I've got my reference, at least enough to get started, way more than I need. I've got my sketch, so how do I get started? Well, I organize all my reference into my folders. I try to be very organized about it. I can go back to PhotoBucket if I need something else, or to, sorry, to Pixabay. Uh, right now I'm gonna clean up my sketch a little bit and save it. So I'll get rid of my sketchy spine here. And this will be the first thing I submit. So because uh, meeting deadlines is so important in professional practice, I'm going to go ahead and flatten my image and then clean this up a little bit. So move that together, crop it, and save my sketch as a JPEG. And I can put it up into PhotoBucket right away and label it. We know how that works now. So save as a JPEG, and you want, we want it to be fewer than five megabytes. So we're able to do that on this screen with the JPEG options. So at quality 10, one megabyte, that's fewer than five. That works. There it is. Go to Chrome, go to Photo Bucket, go to the library. I just wanted to get this all in the video for you. Uh, go down to the assignment two under digital one assignments, and you're going to put your stuff right here. I'm going to put my stuff under instructional examples and drag and drop it in. And then we label it with our naming convention, which is capital SP20 and then our name and then the number one, because we start with our sketch. And then we get to work on our composite on top of our sketch. There it is. What's great about sketching is no matter what you're inspired by, no matter how random it is, the more you kind of work through a process, you'll see you have certain tendencies. And so it's it's good to start recognizing kind of what processes work for you, what's most valuable. And so that's why we'll always include some process work in our assignments. Okay, so going back to our project here. Now we're going to use that sketch. And once we've saved it and maybe even uploaded it to photo bucket with all its different components. Now I want to crop down to just the creature because the project is to show the creature head to toe. Don't need all the other stuff. And now, just like we did for our fantasy landscape, I need to make this print quality, whether it's a screen grab or not. So I go to image size. Once I've cropped down to around my creature and I want to make this larger than 11 by 14 inches. So I have resample checked. So I'm going to make the height 11. I'm going to make the width 14. There we go. So this is larger than 11 by 14. And then I want the resolution to be 350. And it's going to make it blurrier, but it's fine. It's just my blueprint. And now my reference will be the right size on top of it. So that moved up just my sketch cropped to being about 61 megabytes, right? Now I can start bringing in reference. So let's see, what's the one I know I want? It's this one, the forearms, this part here. So I drag and drop that in. Notice it's already about the right size, right? And so I can hit return and then I can rasterize it, but I'll, I'll do a better thing just like we did with the landscape. I'm going to grab more of it than I need, you know, a rough cut, because I really just want the chest. And then I'm going to duplicate it, Command-J, and that automatically rasterizes it. And then I can delete. Now here's the problem. I've got this. I'm going to turn Auto Select Layer on for my Move Tool. I know it needs to go there. I can take the opacity down and I can hit Command-T 
and I can start to stretch it and warp it to get the elbows where I want it on my sketch, to get the shoulders where I want it. So all of that works. The problem is it's covering up my sketch and it's hard to see what I'm doing. Right, and I notice, oh, that's not quite the right angle. So instead of trying to do it all on top of your sketch, once you have it at, uh, at larger than 11 by 14 at 350 pixels per inch, then I want to grow the canvas size around so I have some working space, just like we did with our landscapes. So now I go to image canvas size and I grow it to be 30 inches, or actually 40 inches wide by 30 inches tall with a gray background. And now I can move that reference. And if I need to, I can duplicate it and then flip it horizontally and kind of see what's going to need to happen, right? And it's really just that part of the chest I need. So I can start bringing in a lot of reference now. So every time you move vectors, you can make them any way? So we, just like with the landscape, we can adjust the lighting, we can adjust the color, we can layer things on top of each other and, and take away with soft edge brushes, but we cannot paint or draw anything. So we have to manipulate found pixels. That's compositing instead of creating our own original pixels. All right, so the focal point of a character is usually the head. So I'm going to uh, bring in some reference that I think is very helpful for the head, like this rhinoceros beetles, like horn shield there is very nice. And then I can just do a rough cut, right? Even though this isn't a vertebrate creature, it gives me a lot to work with. I want to have enough overlap. Duplicate it, then delete. Uh, in terms of the head itself, I think this one is pretty sympathetic, this armadillo. I'm going to flip it and then angle it down. Right? Notice it's already about the right size. And then I want to get a lot of overlap right? before I duplicate it and then delete the smart layer because we're going to have a lot of references. I'm just deleting the, the smart objects right away. So the first component I'll put together is the head. And then there's this great vulture, which I think is going to cover up a lot of the neck and chest. I'm going to flip that horizontal, do a rough cut around it just to rasterize it. And this is kind of ideal photo reference. I mean, it's, it would be better if it was shot on just a white background, but notice how blurry the background is and how sharp the detail is. So I can just use contiguous and the magic wand at 32. Up, oh, I'm on the wrong layer. Let's see. There we go. And it should do a pretty good job selecting out. Yeah, look at that. around these feathers. Just holding down shift, adding to it. Oh, it's so nice when this is easy. As we know from like cutting out mountains and trees, it's not always easy. And then I can use my lasso and extend it. I'm just showing you what's to come in a little bit. And get rid of all this little noise. And then because it's rasterized, this is the main part I want. I just hit delete. And I have it feathering at two pixels. So you can see it's biting it in a little bit. And if I want to soften it, I can say select and mask. And I can smooth it out. So select and mask works with any selection. 
It will remember your settings. If you click it to remember your settings, which I recommend, 